it's one of the most important interview question difference between this keyword and super keyword difference between this and super yeah. super refers the immediate parent class super refers what immediate parent class what about this keyword this is used to represent the current class right let's see the first statement first statement is nothing but difference you can we can we can specify as a difference the definition definition you can give as a difference you can give the definition One is this, the second thing is what we can use. We can use what? Super. This and super. Let's see what is the difference between this and super keyword. What is the difference between what? This and super keyword. Let's see this is this is used to represent the current class. What is this? This is used to represent what? represent the current class if you want to represent the current class if you want to represent we use this keyword we use this is used to represent the current class this is used to represent what the current class what about super super is used to represent the immediate parent class super is used to represent the immediate super is used to represent the immediate parent class this is used to represent the current class super is used to represent what the immediate parent class super is used to represent the immediate parent class this is for this is for current class super is for what super is for the immediate parent class is used to represent the immediate parent class okay this is the first difference the definition i can see the difference next what is it what is the next, next difference immediate parent class only one difference this this is used to call this is used to call current class instance methods and instance data this is used to call this is used to call what this is used to call current class instance methods current class instance methods and instance data this particular this keyword is used to call what this particular this keyword is used to call the instance methods and instance data this particular this keyword is used to call what instance methods and instance data this is used to call what instance methods and instance data what about what about super keyword super is used to call the parent class instance method and instance data super is used to call parent class instance method and instance data right super is used to call what parent class instance method and instance data okay and this of is used to call the current class constructor this of is used to call is this of is used to call current class constructor this of is used to call the current class constructor from a constructor this of is used to call what this of is used to call current class constructor from a constructor okay and super of is used to call the parent class constructor super of is used for what super of is used to call parent class constructor super of is used to call super of is used to call parent class constructor this of is used to call the current class constructor you can, you can use this super of you can use super of is used to call what parent class constructor super of is used to call parent class constructor next what is another difference this of is used to call the current class constructor from a constructor super of is used to call what parent class constructor from a constructor 
and dissolve should be the initial here you can write uh, this awk should be the initial statement in a constructor this awk should be what should be initial statement in a constructor initial statement in a constructor meaning if you want to use super, if you want to use this off if you want to use this off should be the initial statement in a constructor this should be what this off should be the initial statement in a constructor what about super super off super off also, super off also should be what what about super off keyword super off also should be what super off also should be should be the initial statement in a constructor super off should be what should be the initial statement in a constructor declaration so this off should be the initial statement in a constructor declaration as well as super off also what super off super off also should be the initial statement in a constructor declaration and next <clears throat> next thing is nothing but static cannot be accessed i mean sorry this cannot be accessed this cannot be accessed inside static context correct or not inside the static block inside the static block this cannot be accessed this cannot be accessed inside what inside the static context this cannot be accessed this cannot be accessed what inside the static block we cannot use this i mean static block in a sense nothing but it may be static method or simply static block so it cannot be accessed inside the static context we cannot access what about this super super also cannot be accessed inside the static context super cannot be accessed inside the static context okay these are some of the major differences there are some of the major differences I hope maximum we covered. It is used to represent the current class. It's used to represent the super class, parent class. Call the instance method and instance data of a current class. Super is used to call what? Parent class, instance method, and instance data. The major differences we identified already here, right? Now let's see here. This is what what is the differences between this and super keyword? Let's try to recall anything we missed. So I hope you noted these points, right? Yeah. So basically, us we started our discussion. We started our discussion from a protected modifier. Basically, we are discussing about this protected modifier. We are discussing here. Protected, we are discussing. So in protected, we got a requirement of understanding what exactly inheritance means. what exactly inheritance is so after that we start the discussion about inheritance we start the discussion so in the inheritance in the inheritance discussion we got a requirement of understanding what exactly method overriding is so the method overriding uh in the method overriding we got a requirement of we got a requirement of understanding what is this super keyword and what is this keyword we got a requirement of understanding what is super and this so we understand this super and this statement we understand just if we go back and we see the we go back and if you see the method overriding nodes if you see once we go back and if you see the method overriding nodes once see here if you declare a method if you create a method in the child class same like how we declared in the parent class that concept is called as what method overriding if we create a method in the child class same like how we created in the parent class is called as what method overriding and see here i give an example called method overriding is one of the best example for method is method overriding is one of the best example for runtime polymorphism method overriding is one of the best example for what runtime polymorphism so what is the meaning of this one method over overriding method overriding is one of the best example for runtime polymorphism what is the meaning of this statement polymorphism means what it's one of the object oriented programming concept like correct or not polymorphism is one of the object oriented programming concept let's see what exactly polymorphism why we called as method overriding as a runtime polymorphism 
why why we call as what method overriding as what as run time polymorphism have you remember the definition of polymorphism so polymorphism the definition of polymorphism is nothing but the ability the ability of an object the ability of an object will act differently will act differently in different situations the ability of an object the ability of an object will act differently in different situations this is what polymorphism or in short to say this is a definition of polymorphism the ability of an object will act differently in different situations it will act in different in different situations okay so mainly there are two types of polymorphisms are available in java there are two types of polymorphisms in java there are two types of polymorphisms there are two types of polymorphism there are two types of polymorphism one is a dynamic polymorphism one is a dynamic polymorphism one is dynamic polymorphism and in the runtime polymorphism is one thing one is a dynamic polymorphism in the runtime polymorphism runtime polymorphism second thing is nothing but static polymorphism second thing is what static polymorphism okay so these are the two types of polymorphism runtime polymorphism or dynamic polymorphism one more thing is what static polymorphism okay so okay ability of an object will act differently in different situations so let's say here for example meaning one thing is acting in a different ways means to say simply the simple definition if one thing is acting in different ways we call as what as a polymorphism let's say for example my case i will give you this example i guess let's take my case i have a hands on experience with java android and iphone technologies when the company is having a requirement of for example java application developer company will use me as a java developer and whenever they have a requirement of android application developer so company will use me as a an android developer I meaning what i'm doing is whenever they have a requirement of iphone so they use me as a iphone iphone developer best example let's take my case because in this year let's take for example now it's may right now it's april right with just four months of time i changed three platforms i changed the company is whenever the initial in the month of january i worked on android platform i worked then after that slowly uh, there is a work 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 pressure is reduced in android suddenly they have, they got a requirement of in java technology they moved me into java technology so medium level company so they moved me immediately they moved me into java technology there i, I worked two months i worked the february and march i worked in the java technology java web technology then after that again so suddenly they got a project in iphone there is no any developer in iphone they got a project So they asked me to migrate into iPhone again. So now I'm doing the iPhone projects I'm doing now. I mean, what the company is getting the benefit is nothing but they are reusing, correct or not? I Meaning Mahesh is acting as here in a different way. It is acting acting here. So in the same way, and the programmatically also, let's say for example, if one thing is acting in different ways, that's called as what polymorphism. Now, why the method overriding is is called as polymorphism is? Let's say why the method overriding is called as dynamic polymorphism is. why the method overriding method overriding is called as dynamic polymorphism is in inheritance in method overriding let's say in method overriding method overriding the same method is declared in the parent class as child class and child class correct or not in method overriding the same method will be declared same method will be declared in parent class and child class parent class and as well as what parent class and child class in method overriding the same method will be declared in parent class and child class jvm will decide dynamically jvm will decide dynamically jvm will decide dynamically 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 which class object it has to create sorry in method overriding parent class and method overriding the same method will be declared in parent class as well as child class 
JVM will decide dynamically which class method has to execute. Which class method has to execute. JVM will decide dynamically which class method has to execute. So that's why that's why method overriding is called as method overriding is called as what? That's why method overriding is called as dynamic polymorphism. That's why method overriding is called as what? Dynamic polymorphism. So here we know that we already seen that method overriding means nothing but uh, Method overriding means nothing but what? If you create the same method, if you create in the child class, same like how we declared in the parent class, how we declared in the parent class, and that concept is called as what? Method overriding. Now here, the parent class is having the method, child class is having the method. Which class method it has to execute? Whether it has to execute the parent class method or the child class method. That is based on the object for which class you are creating the object. Based on the object for which class you are creating the object, based on that one, it's going to call the particular method is going to be called. So JVM is going to decide dynamically that one, which class method it has to call. It has to call the parent class method or it has to call the child class method. Okay, it's going to decide dynamically, it's going to decide that one, which class method has to execute. That's why it is called as what? Dynamic polymorphism we call. It. So another example for what? Dynamic polymorphism. It's dynamically, it's going to decide which class method has to execute. What is another one? Static polymorphism. Static polymorphism. The best example for this static polymorphism is method overloading. Method or constructor overloading. Method or constructor overloading is one of the best example for is one of the best example for one of the best example for method or constructor overloading. Method or constructor overloading is one of the best example for static polymorphism. Static polymorphism which concept method or constructor overloading is one of the best example for what static polymorphism so what is this method or method overloading or constructor overloading let's see here if we create a method or a constructor if we create a method if we create a method if we create a method, we create a method or constructor if we create a method or constructor with the same name with the same name with different input parameters with different input parameters is called as is called as method or method or constructor overloading meaning only one name only one name but we'll specify the different parameters we we'll specify if we create a method or constructor with the same name with different input parameters with different input parameters with different input parameters different input parameters different input parameters then it is called as what it is called as method overriding or method overloading or constructor overloading Okay, this method overloading or constructor overloading is the best example for what? Static polymorphism. Let's see here, we'll try to create only one method but with a different parameter, different input parameters. That is called as method overloading. Let's start. Programmatically, we'll see that code. What is method overloading or constructor overloading? We'll understand. One second, just hey, give me a minute. I'll come back.
So I'm getting a Java class I'm creating here. What is my method overloading or constructor overloading? If we create a method or constructor with the same name with different input parameters, with different input parameters, then it is called as method overloading or constructor overloading. Correct or not? Okay. Let's see here. I'm creating a I'm creating a Java class I'm creating here. I'm creating a Java class I'm creating here. Let's say method overloading test is a class. Method overloading test is a class I created. Method overloading test is a class. Okay. So in this class, in this class, method overloading test class. Method overloading test class. Okay. What is in the method overloading or constructor overloading? Okay. So if you create a same method with different input parameters, that is called as what method overloading. Let's take I'm creating a method I'm creating here. Let's take public. I'm creating a method I'm creating here. Public void show msg is a method. What is the method mean? Show msg is a method. So what kind of method it is? It is a no argumented method, meaning the method is not taking any input parameters. Okay. Just I'm writing a message here. I'm writing a message system dot out dot println system dot out dot println. Let's take I'm from I'm from show msg method. So, if you create a constructor or method with the same name but with different input parameters, we call as what method overloading or constructor overloading. We call okay, it's called as method or method or constructor overloading, right? Okay, let's see here. We're creating a job, we're creating, we're creating a program we created. Just I'm creating, I'm creating, I'm creating method, method I'm creating called show msg is a method. Let's say I'm specifying a message here called I am from show msg method. So I'm from show msg method. What is in the method overloading or constructor overloading? For example, if you create a method with the same method with multiple input parameters, and the method name is same with multiple input parameters, we call as what method overload. So I'm creating one more constructor I'm creating here. I'm creating one more constructor I'm creating. Name I specified the same name. Show msg name I specified the same thing. Let's say, for example, this method is taking, you cannot create one single method with the same parameters, same name and all. You're going to get an error, you're going to get. See here, let's say the program. Let's say the program and specifying the class name as method overloading test.java, mol test.java. Now, if you, if you compile this one, you're going to get an error, you're going to get, because where you save the program, Java, 930 p.m. is a folder. In this folder, we save the files we save. 
Java C method overloading tester dot Java. Method overloading test dot Java. See, we got the error we got. Method show MSG is already already defined in the method overloading test dot class in this class. Show MSG method is what? It's already defined in the method overloading test dot Java class. So if we create multiple methods with the same name, we call it as method overloading. Concept is fine, but the parameters should be different. We should not give the same parameters. The parameters should be what? Different parameters we have to configure here. So here I'm configuring the parameter. One thing is, let's say for example, this show MSG method is taking one integer parameter as input, for example, into today. Into what? Today's input parameter for this show MSG method. So here I'm specifying here, I am from show MSG method. This I'm printing is today I'm printing one. Okay, so let's say I'm, I'm creating one more method I'm creating here. Let's take one more method I created here. One more method I created. Let's take this parameter is taking uh, the float as input parameter. Let's take, for example, float. Uh, what is it? Let's say, for example, if you want to show this message, if you want to show, let's take what is a what is the temperature, for example. Temperature means you are going to get decimal value, you are going to get right. For example, I specified float type, I specified what is the temperature? What is the temperature? So here in the show image method, I'm specifying this temperature. Now this is called as method overload, method overloading, meaning we specified the same method name we specified called show MSG method, but different input parameters. One method is not taking any arguments as input, any input parameters. One more method is taking what? Integer as input. One more method is taking what? A float is taking as input. This concept is called as what? Method overloading. In the same way, you, did, you create a constructor also you created. In the same way you created multiple constructors you can create, but the parameter should be what? Different parameters, right? Okay, now here there are th there are uh, three methods are there. The no argumented method is one thing. One is taking the integer parameter as input. One more thing is taking the float as input parameter. So how can you call this particular method? See, the, all these are the instance methods. All these are the instance methods. So for calling the instance method, what you had to create? We had to create an object you had to create and we had to hold into a reference you had to hold for calling this instance methods, right? Okay, so I'm getting an object I'm creating for this particular class. I'm creating an object I'm creating for this particular class. MYL test is equals to new MYL test. MYL test is equals to what? New MYL test. Now use this reference. Use this reference called, call this method called show MSG method. Now in this particular case, in this particular case, which one is going to call? Which particular method is going to call? The method. Of course, we are not giving any input. We are not giving for this one, right? We are not giving any input. We are not given for this show MSG method. At that time, it's going to call this, the no argumented method is going to call, the method which is not taking any input parameters. This particular method is going to be called, when you call this statement, show MSG method. So your JVM knows that, of course, there are three methods are there. There are three methods which are declared, which are declared with the same name. There are three methods which are declared with the same name, but the parameter names are different, correct or not? The parameters are different here. So it's it's polymorphism only. It's a polymorphism. The same name we configured with multiple parameters. We can't method name is same with different input parameters. Single form, multiple actions. Okay. So, but here JVM knows that which particular method it has to call because we are calling this show MSG method. Of course, there are different methods with this name, but we are not sending any arguments, right? If you're not send, if you're not sending any arguments, it's going to call the the default one it's going to call, which is not taking any input parameters. Let's say, for example, you want to, if you, if you call this one t.showMSG method, which you are sending today, date if you are sending, 11 is specified. If you make it 11, what will happen? It's going to call that, it's going to call this method, show MSG method will be called, the show MSG method will call, which is taking the number as input. The show MSG method will call, which is taking this integer number as input parameter. And t dot when you call this show MSC method, and if you are sending the float type of data, if you are sending as input, let's take for example, today temperature is 44.5. If you want to represent it's a float type of value, if you want to represent it's a float type of value, you had to specify 44.5 F, the float type of value. If it is a float type of value, we had to specify what? F we had to specify. It's a float type of value. So now here, in this particular case, it's going to call the method. 
in this particular case, it's going to call a method which is not taking any input parameters, which is not taking any, the method which is not taking input parameters, meaning it's going to call this method. And if you call this method show msg, you are sending this number we are giving as input, right? It's going to call a method which is taking the integer as input. And if you call this method, we are, we are sending what kind of data? Float type of data we are sending as input. So it's going to call a method which is taking the float type of value as a input. Okay. Let's say the program. Let's say the program ML test. Let's compile and run the program. Java C method overloading test.java. Method overloading test.java. Java method overloading test. Java method overloading test. Click on this enter. See, we got I am from show msg method. I am from show msg method 11, which is taking the number as input. And I am from show msg method, which is taking this float as input 44.5. 44.5. Okay, so it's a call as method overloading. It's one of the example for static polymorphism, meaning there are multiple methods with the same name, but JVM knows that initially only which particular method it has to call. That's what we call as what? It's a static polymorphism. Okay. So I hope you are clear. You are clear with this one. Okay. And uh, so just if you go back, I mean, if you go back from where you started our journey and we started the discussion about this, what exactly the protected modifier. We already discussed about what exactly public we already discussed. We discussed about the private modifier we discussed. Then after that, we discussed about the protected we discussed. From protected, we discussed to inheritance, then after that, this super, then after that, what is polymorphism and all. Okay, so our original discussion is about the access specifier. Our original discussion is about what? Access specifier. There are four access specifiers are there public, private, protected, and default. We already done with these three things. What exactly public, private, protected, and all. What is the last access specifier? Default. What is the last access specifier? Default is the last access specifier. Let's see what exactly default is. What exactly default is? Default. Let's see what exactly what? Default. So default is one of the access specifier. Default is what? Default is one of the access specifier. One of the access specifier which is applicable for class which is applicable for what class comma inner class for main class you can apply this default you can apply for main class for inner class also you can apply this default you can apply for inner class comma methods methods comma data comma constructor and interface constructor and interface this default is what? It's one of the access specifier. Default is one of the access specifier, which is applicable for main class, you can apply this one. For inner class, you can apply. For method, data, constructor, interface, you can apply this default access modifier, you can apply. Default access specifier, you can apply. Meaning, default means, is it separately we had to specify you? Separately we had to use a keyword called default? Like how we are using public, private, protected. In the same way, we had to use default keyword we had to use. No, we should not use that one. Okay. So if any access specifier is not applied, if any access specifier is not applied, if any access specifier is not applied, then it will call as then it will call as default. So strong if you want to mention here, should not mention. Should not mention what? Should not mention default keyword because if you use default keyword, if you use here, the concept is different. The default default is a keyword in Java. It's going to be a different thing if you apply the default. So it's strongly recommended. Should not use a default keyword. If any access specifier is not applied, then it will consider as what? Then it will consider as a default. If any access specifier is not applied, then it will consider as a default type consider as a default okay so then we should not separate we should not specify the default keyword the meaning is going to be changed 
if you apply as default. Okay. If any class or interface or method or constructor, if you don't apply any specifier, you consider as a default type. So, okay. If the class is applied with default, if the class is applied, the class is applied with default, the class or interface, let's say. The class or interface is applied with default. The class or interface is applied with what? With the default. Then the class or interface, then the class, then the class or interface, when the class or interface can access, can access only, can access only within the package. Only within the package only we can access. Outside the package we cannot access. If any class or interface is applied with default, if any class or interface is applied with what? With the default, then the class or interfaces, the class or interface can access only within the particular package only we can access. Outside the package we cannot access that class or interface we cannot access in other packages we cannot access. Only within the particular package we can access. Okay, so if the constructor is declared with default, if the constructor is declared with default, the constructor, the constructor is declared with default, constructor is declared with the default, we can create the object for a class. We can create, we can create the object The constructor is declared with the default. We can create the object. We can create the object for a class. We can create the object. We can create the object for a class from other classes, from other classes which is located in the same package, which is located in the same package. We can create if the constructor is declared with the default. The concept is declared with the default. We can create the object for the particular class. You can create the object from other classes. If the class is from other classes, which is located in the same package, then only we can create the object. Okay. For example, a concept is declared with the default. You are trying to create the object from different package, you are trying to create the object. Then at that time, you cannot create the object from other classes, you cannot create the object. Only a class you can create the object from other classes which is located in the same package then only you can create the object otherwise you cannot create and the next thing is nothing but if if method or data if method or data is declared with default if method or data is declared with default with the default we can access the method or data we can access we can access the method or data. We can access the method or data from other classes. We can access the method or data from other classes, which is located in the same package, which is located in the same package, which is located in the same package. Then only we can access, otherwise you cannot access. Okay. Let's see here. Let's try to understand what exactly this default is. It's what first thing is it's one of the one of the access specifier which is applicable for class, inner class, methods, data, constructor, and interface. Okay. Okay. Let's try to understand this one first. It is applicable for all these applicable, but if it is any method or constructor, anything is applicable with default, the scope is nothing but only within that particular package only we can access. Outside the package, we cannot access outside the package. Let's see here. Let's try to understand. Programmatically, we'll try to understand. Really, it's are we act, are we not able to access in other packages? So let's see. Programmatically, let's test. I'm creating a Java class. I'm creating here. I'm creating a Java class. I'm creating here. This Java class. I'm creating under a package. This Java class. I'm creating a package. I'm creating under a package called com dot. Package com dot. Let's take for example. Uh, can give any name. Let's take for example, I'm specifying nit dot nit dot 
online dot this take this are this are the packet name I specify here nit dot online dot java 9 pm is a package name I specify what is the package name nit dot online dot java 9 pm is a package name okay in this package I am creating a class I'm creating here I'm creating a Java class I'm creating here called test is a class name. what is the class name test is a class and see here I have not applied any I have not applied any specifier I have not applied for this particular class I have not applied public or private or protected I have not applied any access specifier I have not applied so by default it will consider as a default type it will consider by default okay so done we create a default class we created and we create a constructor we are creating here let's take for example so test is a test test of you know right what exactly constructor if you create a block if you create with the same class name if you create a block if you create with the name class name that's called as what constructor right so here we create a constructor we are creating here we're writing system dot out dot print and writing a message here system dot out dot print I'm writing a message I'm writing here this is from test constructor from what from test constructor test test dot java test dot java okay now I'm creating a I'm creating on some variable I'm creating here I'm creating variable I'm creating here Int, for example, what is today date? Today, today, what is the today date? Today is equals to 11. I specified. Today is equals to what? 11. I specified. And I'm creating method. I'm creating here. Public void, for example. Now display temperature is a method. I'm creating one more thing called display temperature. Is one method. I'm creating method. I'm creating. What is the method name? Display temperature is a method I created. What is the method name? Display temperature is a method we created. Display temperature is a method. Let's say the program test.java. Let's say the program test.java. <clears throat> so I'm writing a message I'm writing here system.out.println. System.out.println. Here I'm writing a message I'm writing here. This is from from display from display temp method. From display temperature method. I created a method I created called display temperature is a method and here in this particular method I'm printing a message I'm printing here from from display temperature method is a method I specify just I'm writing some message I'm writing on the console from display temperature method is a, this is what we are writing from display temperature we are writing on the, on the screen okay display temperature so we get a constructor we created we get a class we created called test is a class name we get a class called test is a class name. In this test class, we get a constructor we created and we get an integer variable we created called today. And we get a method we created called display temperature is a method we created, display temperature method. Okay, display temperature is a method we created in this particular class. What is the class name? Test is a class. And are we specified any specifier for anything? Constructor, for constructor, for data, for method, even we don't specify for, for this method we applied public even i'm removing this public i'm also removing it. now this method is also what it's a default method default data and default constructor because we have not applied any specifier so it consider as what as a default type it will consider okay i'm creating one more one more java class i'm creating here one more java class i'm creating here i'm specifying the class name as sample is a class name i specified what is the class name sample is a class i specified even this sample class also I'm specifying in the same package package com dot sorry nit dot nit dot online dot java 9 pm meaning we created these two things we created in the same package what is the class name sample dot java sample dot java so here test is a class which is located in the in a package called nit dot online dot java 9 pm and we, we are creating a class called sample is a class even this sample class also we are creating under a package nit dot online dot java 9 pm okay so nit dot online dot java java 9 pm is a package right so now here i'm trying to access i'm trying to access this class i'm trying to access let's create the object for test class 
test t is equals to new test test t is equals to what new test call is t dot t dot let's call this method called display temperature method for display temperature method now I'm writing here system dot out dot print align. Writing system dot out dot print align. T dot T dot. We get a variable greater, right? What is the variable name specified? Today is a variable is specified, local variable, right? I'm calling this today also I'm calling. But let's see here. Let's see here. These two are defined under the same packages. Test class, one more thing is sample class. So first we'll compile these two classes, we'll compile first. Both are declared under a package. I hope you remember the class is declared under a package. How to compile that class? I hope you remember that one, right? The class is declared under a package. How to compile that one? I hope you remember, right? Okay. Let's compile this one first. Java C hyphen D space dot space. What is the first class thing? Test dot test dot java java c hyphen d dot space test dot java compile this test dot java class again after that compile this class java c hyphen d dot space compile the class called what sample dot java we compile the test dot java class we are compiling as well as sample dot java class also we are compiling okay now there is no any issues we get a main method under in this sample package sample class we created it i'm calling here Java sample I'm calling here. We got the output we got from test method. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Here it's a fully qualified name we had to specify because sample class, we want to compile from the package which is located in a package, right? We had to specify the fully qualified name. Java space NIT dot, this is what the package name we specified. Online dot NIT dot online dot Java 9 PM is a package name. In this package, we created Java class for what? Sample is a class name. Let's run this program. See, we got from test constructor, from test constructor, from display temp method, and 11 we got. So we are able to access, we are able to access, we are able to create the object first of all. We are able to create the object for this particular class. The constructor is called, the method is called, as well as the variable is also called. Because both are created, the test class as well as the sample class both are declared under the same package both are declared that's why we are able to access now here what i'm doing is just i'm, I'm renaming the package name instead of online java 9 pm just i change the package name i changed mahesh i changed the package name. this sample class now we are creating under a different package we are creating this sample class NIT dot online dot in Mahesh package. We are creating this sample class. We are creating under a Mahesh package. Let's see the code now. Let's try to compile the code. Java C hyphen D test dot Java sample dot Java. Let's compile this Java. See here. Now we got the error we got. Now we got the error we got. Test T is equals to new test. It is telling, it is telling cannot find the symbol. Okay, it's telling cannot find the symbol. Why it is showing the cannot find the symbol? Because now earlier both are in a day, same package that's why there is no issue there is no need of writing the import statement but now we are in a different package nit.online.mahesh is a different package and nit.online.java 9 pm is a different package so we are using a class called test we are using a class called test and this test class is and is placed under a package called nit.online.java 9 pm so the statement we had to write this import statement we had to write to specify where this test class is located. So let's write the import statement. Import import nit dot nit dot online dot. What is the package name? Java 9 pm is a package. In this Java 9 pm package, we had to specify the location of the test dot class. See, it's not. It's showing the class. It's showing the error as cannot find the symbol where this test is located. That's why we're specifying the path we are specifying boss. This particular test class is located in this package, the test class is located. We are using, we are specifying that pack location we are specifying by using the import statement. Okay, now let's compile this one. We specified import statement we specified. 
Let's compile these programs, test.java, and after that sample.java class, test.class, test.java class, and sample.java. See here, early and we got the exception we got as cannot find the symbol we got, right? Earlier we got the exception cannot find the test class. But now we got the error we got here. See what is the error we got? Test is not public. What is the error we got? Test is not public in nit.online.java 9 p.m. Cannot be accessed from, cannot be accessed from what? From outside the package we cannot access. Cannot be accessed from outside the package we cannot access the test class we cannot access from outside the package. You got it right? Earlier we got the message as cannot find the symbol what exactly this test is. That's why you specified the import statement we specified. After adding the import statement, now it is showing the error as test is not public, cannot be accessed in another package. So if the class is public, then only we can access that particular class. Otherwise, we cannot access the class in other packages we cannot access. When you can access, only if the class is declared with public, the class is declared with public, then only we can access that class in other packages. Otherwise, we cannot access the class in other packages we cannot access. Okay, class I made it as public. Class I made it as public. So now here, initially it is showing the error at the accessing the class and it is showing the error. So now I declared the class as what? As public, I specified the class. Okay, now we specified the class as public. Now recompile the code, Java C. We use the packages, that's why I'm using this hyphen D dots and all. Now, if you compile the program, now you are going to get the error at constructor state. Earlier, we got the exception for class. Now, we got the exception for what? For constructor, we got the exception. Test of is not public in test, meaning constructor is not public. Cannot be accessed outside the package. Cannot be accessed outside the package. If the constructor is declared with default, we can create the object from other classes which is located in the same package. But if the class is located in different package, if you try to access, you cannot create the object, you cannot create the object for that particular class. You cannot create the object for that particular class, you cannot create the object until the constructor is declared as what? As public. Then only you can create the object from other classes. Otherwise, you cannot create the object from other class, you cannot create the object. So now I create the Constructor I applied with what? Public I applied. Now let's see here, what is the error you are going to get? Java C, sample.java. So now, first compile this one, test.java class. Then after that, sample.java. So now the constructor error is going to be clear. Earlier three errors. Now the constructor error is cleared. Now the error we got at this display temperature method. Because this method is not public in test. So we cannot access from outside the package, only can access within the particular package only can access. You can access from other classes which is located in the same package. So if you make these two things as public, then only you can access from other classes you can access. Other classes which is located in different package also you can access. But if it is declared as default, you can access from other classes which is located in a same package. Okay. Now everything we, we change to public, we change everything now. So you can access in the same package and in other packages also we can access because we specified as what? As a public, we specified all these things. Now let's see here, if you want to see the output, Java space, what is the package name we specified? NIT dot, NIT dot, online dot, what is the package name we configured? Mahesh is the package name. In the Mahesh package, let's run this program called sample. So you got the output you got from test constructor, from default display temp method and all. In the variable we got. So let's try to understand what exactly default. If there is no any access specifier is not applied, by default it considered as a default. The class is applied with default. We can create, we can access this particular class from other, we cannot access this class from other packages. We can access from other classes which, which is located in the same package. That is one thing. The constructor is declared as default. We cannot create the object for this particular class from other classes. We can create the object from other classes which is located in the same package. The same thing for variable and data also. I hope if you read these statements, you'll understand clearly, you'll understand. Just programmatically, uh, programmatically for all these statements, whatever we discuss here, all these statements, 
these statements programmatically are defined in this example I specified programmatically in this example okay so this is about the access specifiers this is about the access specifiers we discuss about the four types of access specifiers public private protected as well as default okay so in our next class we'll discuss just only specifier part is completed only four access specifiers part is completed next there are total eight access modifiers are there like static abstract final native transient volatile street fp like there are eight access modifiers are there okay so from tomorrow onwards we'll start our discussion about that access modifiers part and tomorrow class we'll discuss about this static modifier we'll discuss in the tomorrow class what we'll discuss static modifier we'll discuss in the tomorrow class we'll discuss about this static modifier okay so let me know if you have any queries otherwise we'll see in the tomorrow class with a great concept called static modifier